Welcome to our instructional video on stresses in thin and thick cylinders. This video explains the fundamental concepts of stress analysis of both thin and thick cylinders. A thin cylinder is a type of cylindrical structure, where the thickness of the wall is considered negligible compared to the overall dimensions of the cylinder. In other words, the ratio of the wall thickness to the cylinder radius is very small. As a result, the stress and strain distribution across the wall thickness is assumed to be uniform. The cylinder is considered thin when the ratio of the wall thickness, T, to the cylinder radius, R, is less than or equal to 0.1. Thin cylinders are often used in engineering to model pressure vessels, such as gas cylinders or pipes, where the pressure inside the cylinder is significantly higher than the external pressure. When subjected to an internal pressure, the wall of a thin cylinder is subjected to three types of stresses. Number 1, Longitudinal Stress. The thin cylinder experiences a predominantly tensile or compressive stress along its length due to the internal pressure. This stress is known as the longitudinal stress and is assumed to be uniform across the wall thickness. Number 2, Hoop Stress. The hoop stress is a circumferential stress that arises due to the internal pressure acting radially outward. This stress is twice the longitudinal stress and also uniform across the wall thickness. Number 3, Radial Stress. The radial stress acting across the wall is negligible in thin cylinders because the wall thickness is considered small. Therefore, it is often disregarded in thin cylinder analysis. However, the pressure acting on the internal surface can be considered as radial stress on the surface. Let us see how to calculate the stresses. Look at the diagram that shows longitudinally cut half cylinder. Balancing the forces acting on half section of the cylinder we can write 2 into sigma h into l into t equals p into l into d. This is simplified to sigma h equals 2 pd divided by 2t. Now we see the calculation of longitudinal stress. For this, consider the portion of the cylinder cut normal to the length. Sigma l into pi d into t equal to pressure p into pi d squared divided by 4. This is simplified to p d divided by 4 t. This shows that longitudinal stress is half of the hoop stress. Next, we look at stresses in thick cylinders. A cylinder is classified as thick when the ratio of the wall thickness, t, to the cylinder radius, r, is relatively large. Generally, if the ratio exceeds 0.1, the cylinder is considered thick. This implies that the thickness of the cylinder wall is significant, compared to the overall dimensions of the cylinder. Thin cylinders rely on simplified assumptions and equations, while thick cylinders require more complex analysis using theories such as the Lame theory or the theory of elasticity to consider non-uniform stress distributions across the wall thickness. Thick cylinders find applications in various engineering fields where structures need to withstand high pressures or contain fluids under high stress conditions. Some common applications of thick cylinders include pressure vessels, pipelines, hydraulic systems, steam boilers, and heavy machinery components. In a thick cylinder, the stresses within the wall are not uniformly distributed. Instead, they vary with the radius of the cylinder. The radial stress and the hoop stress are given by Lame equations. Lame equations are, radial stress, sigma r is equal to capital A minus, capital B, divided by r squared. And hoop stress, sigma h is equal to capital A plus, capital B, divided by r squared. The Lame equations reveal that both the radial stress and the hoop stress exhibit linear variations with 1 over r squared, where r represents the radius. These equations share a common intercept, denoted as capital A, but possess opposite gradients, 
represented by, capital B, in relation to each other. We can show these stresses graphically as shown here. We can plot both the radial stress and the hoop stress on the same coordinate system by drawing the horizontal axis for hoop stress from right to left. This way, we can visualize and compare their variations easily. You can see here the single plot for both the stresses with corresponding Lame's equations. Next, let us look at how to show the stresses when a thick cylinder is subjected to an internal pressure only. First, we draw the stress axis, and the 1 over r squared axis. Then draw the vertical lines to represent the inner and outer radii on both hoop stress and radial stress sides. The pressure acting on the internal surface is taken as a compressive stress. The pressure acting on the outer surface is taken as zero. Now, we draw a straight line joining these two points and it is extended to hoop stress side. We can now determine the stresses, namely the radial and hoop stresses, within the region between the inner and outer radii of the cylinder. You can see here, the maximum stress occurs at the inner surface of the cylinder, which is a tensile hoop stress. Now, we look at the graphical representation of stresses, when the cylinder carries only an external pressure. Pressure acting on the external surface is taken as a compressive stress. The pressure acting on the inner surface is taken as zero. Now, we draw a straight line joining these two points and it is extended to hoop stress side. We can now determine the stresses, namely the radial and hoop stresses, within the region between the inner and outer radii of the cylinder. You can see here, the maximum stress occurs at the inner surface of the cylinder, which is a compressive hoop stress. This shows a plot of stresses when the cylinder is subjected to both internal and external pressures. The maximum hoop stress value depends on the values of internal pressure and external pressure. In this situation, the hoop stress is tensile, because that internal pressure is more than external pressure. Alternative to the graphical method, the Lame equations can be used to calculate stresses. For example, we take the case of internal pressure only. First, use the known stress values to evaluate the constants, A and B. At, R equals Ri, the value of sigma R is the value of internal pressure. At, R equals R note, the value of sigma R, is zero. By applying these boundary values, we have obtained two equations with A and B, so, we will find A and B in terms of applied pressure cylinder radii. By resolving equations, 1, and, 2, we have obtained values for A and B, and then equations for radial stress and hoop stress. These two equations, can now be utilized to find the stresses at point across the wall thickness. If you plot the hoop and the radial stresses using these two equations over the cylinder thickness, it should be as shown in the figure given here. This also shows that the maximum hoop stress occurs at the inner surface.